I'm Brad Templeton from Robocars.com, and as I've done in the last few years, I'm here to talk about the big stories in self-driving cars for 2022. I did a more detailed summary of the first quarter of the year. You'll find it in the description, but these are the game changers for the past year. There's no doubt that this was a year of huge ups and downs, a year where some gave up and others doubled down, a year where the stock market and VC funding took a massive nosedive, and companies mostly shrunk, but also a year of great technical progress. Usually I do this as a countdown to the biggest story, but I'll spoil it right now and say that the big story was the incredible contrast of the good and bad news. So I'm instead going to tell you the good, the bad, and the not particularly ugly. While there's been talk of a robocar winter for some time, ever since automotive OEM players missed on their invented predictions of having cars in 2020, things hit a low note in 2022. The events I am about to list triggered a spate of articles in some press declaring the death of the robocar. It became fashionable to now predict such cars were decades away, and that untold billions had been spent in the market frenzy with little to show for it. One company that dealt with some of the bad news was one of the biggest newsmakers of the year, GM's Cruise Unit. Cruise had their vehicles out on the street each night, but didn't make a fan of the city officials. Cruise had a spade of incidents where their cars would just get stuck, frozen on the roads with blinkers on, sometimes several of them at the same time. Some people got angry, or pretended to be angry. The reality is that while Cruise clearly had some strange bugs, if blocking traffic in the middle of the night is a calamity, we should have banned human drivers long ago. Cruise got a lot of attention and went viral in a bad way when one of their cars was pulled over by police for not having its lights on. That was strange enough, but a strange result of Cruz's special programming for just such events took it viral. The car is programmed to attempt to pull off into a safe place when it is determined, by remote operators or the car, that police are pulling it over. But it decided that only after it had been stopped and police were walking up to it, and then it darted across the intersection to pull over in a better spot, seemingly trying to make a break for it. For decades, a very common question of people first learning about robocars was, what happens when police want to write it a ticket? The police didn't write it a ticket in this case, but the car had a protocol for being pulled over. It displayed a phone number in big print on its screen, and the police phoned it, talked to cruise operators, and resolved the problem. A remote operator had mistakenly turned off the lights. If it had been a software bug, Cruise would have fixed it quickly, and it would have never happened again. When police write a ticket for a human driver, it doesn't do much to stop other drivers from doing the same thing. Not so with robots. The fire department was more upset when an unusual situation had a Cruise vehicle stopping in the oncoming lane, as it was programmed to do when a fire truck approached. Problem was, it stopped in a place opposite a double-parked truck, and the road was blocked, and the Cruise could only back up into the intersection, which it didn't want to do. The cruise crew were about to fix it when the truck moved on. The fire department didn't like that even this short delay, but in reality, I think that robocars will make the roads much better for emergency crews than they are now in the future. Crews had a much more serious problem with their first injury accident. They were trying to turn left and started their turn while a car was coming at them in the right turn lane very fast. The car didn't turn and tried to go straight through. The cruise car froze. A mistake. The oncoming car clipped it on the corner. Injuries were not serious, but crews somehow arranged for the silence of all involved so we don't know a lot more. Police didn't put the cruise car at fault. The other car was speeding and in the wrong lane, but it could definitely have done better. Crews issued a recall to fix this. But it was just a software update. A recall doesn't make sense when the car maker owns the cars. The real bad news was business news. At the start of the year, Cruz fired their CEO, Dan Ammon, over a dispute with GM CEO Mary Barr over whether the company would go public and whether it would focus only on self-driving or instead feeding useful tech to General Motors. Founder Kyle Vogt returned to the role of CEO. But there was much worse business news than that. 
Casualties were left on the side of the road as shuttle companies, Optimus Ride, and Local Motors shut their doors, along with Amazon's Scout Delivery Robot Project. We saw significant layoffs at High Flyer Neuro, even though they started manufacturing, and also Hyundai Aptiv's motional joint venture. Trucking company Too Simple saw major chaos in the C-suite and boardroom and ended the year by laying off a quarter of their staff. Almost no company was left unscathed by layoffs. The many companies in the space who went public by SPACs saw massive devaluations, and LiDAR Pioneer Quantity, which I helped get started, went bankrupt in December. We also saw Audi shut down their Artemis unit. All the car OEMs except GM and Tesla have been scaling back in their self-driving efforts in some way, which is part of what inspired the declarations of doom in the press. We also saw leaks that Apple was scaling back their project, with a potential release in 2026, but with pedals and a wheel like a regular car. Apple, of course, has made no comment. But no question, the biggest and baddest story was the shutdown of Argo AI, a startup funded by Ford and later VW. Argo was one of the big players, with billions invested, though it was not one of the leaders. Ford simply announced they were shutting it down. They rehired about 700 of the staff into Ford and reabsorbed the IP. That OEMs were getting cold feet was no surprise. They never wanted a fast robocar revolution and are content to work on ADAS. What was more surprising is that nobody wanted to buy Argo for a song. It was reported that Amazon, which already owned Zooks, was interested in it for delivery vans, but nothing happened. If they shopped it to anybody else, nobody bid in this slow market. Tesla's stock fell greatly, and they got new investigations by government agencies. They got a poorly ordered recall on the ability to do rolling stops at empty intersections, and investigations into hitting emergency vehicles and other autopilot accidents. Impressively, there were not reports of serious FSD accidents. They also had Dan O'Dowd, the wealthy CEO of Green Hill Software, decide to spend a lot of his money on a campaign against Tesla FSD, running full-page ads in the New York Times and pretending to run for U.S. Senate to do political ads. It didn't seem to dent Tesla much, but the biggest wounds came from Elon Musk deciding to buy Twitter and to seemingly destroy it and his formerly stellar reputation in the process. This took the eye off the ball at Tesla and scared away at least some customers. But there was good news too. Even with all the layoffs, shutdowns, and market haircuts, many players pushed forward. In particular, the teams that were startups and tech companies rather than the car companies. I include Cruise here, which began as a startup and is still mostly run as one. Several of the trucking and delivery companies had big improvements this year. Starship, where I'm a stockholder, hit the 4 million paid autonomous delivery milestone and expanded to a whole raft of new service locations, mostly universities. Gaddock, a middle mile trucking delivery company, is now doing regular runs with nobody in the truck between depots in Arkansas for Walmart and in Toronto for Loblaws. Regular commercial service with no safety driver aboard in a big heavy truck is nothing to sneeze at. While the long haul companies that went public by SPAC have seen major hits, Einride, which makes trucks that can't even hold a driver, just closed an additional $500 million investment round. Kodiak, a long-haul company led by Don Burnett, who worked on the early Waymo team, just announced a big military contract. And Metuan, a Chinese company similar to Nero, has reported growth due to COVID lockdown deliveries in China. Mobileye was bought by Intel for $16 billion several years ago. Late in 2022, they went public at a valuation not too different from that, which at first seemed like bad news. They popped the first day and are up over 60%, while the rest of the market has been down or flat. While Tesla certainly had its challenge, their FSD prototype, mistakenly labeled as a beta, is definitely showing improvement. While I still can't get it to do a significant drive without interventions, the distance between interventions is improving, and the system is getting better at turns. I still wouldn't expect any of Elon Musk's regular next year and I mean it this time predictions to come true, and all of his attention is also on Twitter. News from China was of continued growth, 
and opening up a few more cities to no safety driver robotaxi service. There are now over a dozen Chinese cities with robotaxi service. Baidu showed off their new custom robotaxi design. It still has a wheel due to the law, but it's designed so it can be removed later, and they say it will cost just $37,000 to make. Waymo also announced it would use a new robotaxi built by Geely in China. Zooks is growing too. Amazon is building them a factory and spending $1 billion per year on them. They are hiring when the rest of Amazon is cutting back with the downturn. But the big story was the progress and expansion of the field's two top teams, namely Waymo and Cruise. And a lot of it came near the end of the year. In 2019, Waymo launched service in the Phoenix suburb of Chandler with no safety driver in the vehicle. This year, Cruise began service at night in San Francisco to a subset of the public. And Waymo joined in later with 24-hour service with safety drivers in heavy weather. Cruise got permission to charge money as well. Near the end of 2022, we saw big improvements. Waymo started taking the public and expanded with no safety driver territory to the whole city. Though the Northeast Quadrant, including downtown, is still only for employees. Waymo also expanded to downtown Phoenix and opened up the, to public use there. And this month doubled the service area. As a plus, they will also take you to Phoenix Airport's SkyTrain that runs to all terminals. Waymo will soon charge money in San Francisco. I rode in their car in San Francisco, and while no single experience can tell you a system is good, it can quickly reveal if it's bad and the ride was smooth and well-performed. Waymo now has 700 vehicles in operation across the fleet. Cruise announced in October that in 90 days, they would open in both Austin and Phoenix, and they pulled it off, though it's still only at night, and the Phoenix area is also the easy suburb of Chandler, and the Austin area is small. Even so, it shows they can expand and do it fairly quickly. Waymo also said that they will operate in Los Angeles and just got their DMV permit. There are now many cities around the world where people can hail a robo-taxi ride, sometimes with no safety driver in the vehicle. This map shows where they are, mostly in the United States and China, but growing regularly. This year, I began a YouTube channel. You might enjoy some of the videos there, which all came with text articles for those who prefer that. This includes a two-part series on why you're not riding in a robocar quite yet, plus a review of Tesla FSD that gave it an F and still does, even though it's better. I also covered why Tesla should get maps and why they might be putting in imaging radar. There was also a lot of coverage of electric vehicles and the charging business, as well as some on the air travel overload, eVTOL aircraft, and much more. Plus, plenty about Tesla, as seems to always be the case. Tune in and read in 2023 for what should be an interesting year. With a bit of a luck, we'll bounce back from the market downturn, though not without losing a few companies along the way. The business models will get more refined, and that will inspire a new round of startups if they can get funding. We're getting close to the time where a real commercial robo-taxi service arrives, scaled to make money, at least on a gross margin basis. Then the land rush can begin. The same will happen in China in the next couple of years. See you next year. I'm Brad Templeton.